Monsieur le chancelier, Monsieur le recteur et le vice-chancelier, Monsieur le vice-président du conseil d'administration, invité d'honneur, chers diplômés, family and friends, when I was 17, I wanted to become a pilot. And because my eyes were not too good, it turns out that I was stopped. I got glasses, and in those days, you were not allowed to fly with glasses. So you could say that my path was put to the side, and I had to, had to make another choice. So I, I studied physics, and I studied physics for seven years, and I was just an average student, I would say. Another thing is, it was the hippie time, and I ended to be a painter. So I painted for many years, and in the, in the beginning of the 80s, uh, the, my, the, my interest for the technology came back, and so my path was changed again, and in the beginning of the 90s, I was trying to make these new forms of life. Now, you could say that my path made many curves, and none of them was done by choice. Every time I was stopped, either by classes or by other things, and still, looking back, I couldn't think of a better way to be, arrive here. And, so, and this, this process is taking place also in my work. Now, the forms of life I'm making are not based on protein, like the existing forms of life, all our parts of our body is made of protein. You can make skin with protein, and eyes, and muscles. Uh, so you could say that our creator, he limited himself very much in the choice of his materials. He just used protein to make us. And you wouldn't say that if you smash an egg in a pan, and you see this muddy substance that this is the ultimate construction material for life. And, but if you have millions of years, and you try again and again, and that what protein does, it reproduces itself. Each protein molecule reproduces another protein molecule. And so the, the, the protein tries again and again, and it does it for millions of years, and the result is really a success. I mean, we are sitting here with all these protein molecules in us, and it's a, a good machine. Now, I try to do the same strategy. So I limit myself also just to one material, and that's this. This is conduit, which you use for power cables in houses in Holland. So that's why they have the color of cheese. And it's everywhere on the streets. And as a young boy, when I was 11, I used to blow paper darts in open windows with it. So it has been a part of my life all the time. Now, I want to use this as my protein. And I want to try again and again. And since 20 years, I try to do this evolution of the conduit on the beaches. Now, you would think that these animals are independent of mine, but they are not. I still have to nurse them very much, so I have to save them out of the sea, and when there's a storm, I really have to attach them to each other so they don't blow away. But in the coming years, uh, they, I hope to get them better. So in September, I'm going to launch first, the first animal who is able to walk on the fluffy sand instead of only on the hard sand. And hopefully in the, in the coming two decade, decades, they can be independent of me. And then I can quietly die knowing <laughs> that these animals will live on the beaches. Well, when I go, when I wake up in the morning, I usually, I have an idea, 
and I'm very eager to go to my studio and try it out. And during the day, my ID becomes less and less because I'm corrected by this tube. My ideas are not real, realizable because you cannot do everything with this kind of tube. So at the end of the day, I go home depressed because it, I didn't succeed in doing my thing. And the next day, I wake up and there's a new ID. Now, I try to work on function. So I want these animals to really walk very well in the wind and they don't blow away in the storm and they, they can uh, survive the wind silences and the water and all those kind of things. So I just work on function. And at the end, when the animal is finished, usually it doesn't function that well. But I'm surprised that it became a beautiful animal. And I didn't work on beauty. It just came in there somehow. And I think it is because I didn't try to be creative. It, you could say that the path which I walked is very capricious and it was led not by me because my plans, just in my, like in my career, didn't succeed. I was led by the circumstances and those were determined by this. So you could say that the animals were not made by me but they were made by the tubes. Now people praise me for the beauty of the animals. And I feel more or less guilty to receive this honorary doctorary for doing something which I think I didn't do, but it came in there. Now, I think that in the real evolution, I think it, it happens the same thing. We have only one material, so the, the protein tries again and again. It doesn't have any plan. It doesn't have ideas of beauty, but it's still hard to mention an animal or a plant which is not fascinating to look at. So I think the same principle is going on in real nature. Now, I have to go on in the coming years, and I feel very encouraged by this honorary doctorary, and I want to thank Concordia for giving this to me. And I want to thank my family and my wife for the support they've given me the last years. Thank you very much. <laughs>